is video, and I'll back it up in a second. Is to see how quickly situations like this can escalate. То есть как быстро могут развиваться такие такого рода ситуации. All right, so at that point, when that truck started to move, okay, look at the time on here. Okay. So if you count that, that took 15 seconds to clear that whole square. То есть если посчитать, это заняло 15 секунд, чтобы очистить всю площадь. This took place in Italy. Это в Италии. That was my parking spot. Это была моя парковка. It was my car. What is something you notice though about as the square is clearing? Where is everyone going? Where when they're clearing the square with the cars, where is everyone going? Куда нужно направляться, когда вот происходит зачистка площади, куда направляться, куда двигаться Remember that. I want to come back to that. Okay. So one thing that people did wrong in this video is they all went together. They all followed in the same direction, which ended up being a tunnel. So everyone flowed into the tunnel. То есть все, что, что, что вы наблюдаете в этом видео, это когда толпа, она а, просто движется в одном направлении, как, как по тоннелю. And part of being a journalist in a situation of civil unrest is you're going to need to look at the situation in advance. А, и как журналист в таких ситуациях нужно уметь а, оценить эту ситуацию заранее. So there's some general rules about actually covering civil unrest. Uh, есть несколько общих правил для uh, правильного освещения uh, общественных беспорядков. The first is you want to attend but not participate in the actual unrest. Первое, это то, что uh, вы, вы можете там присутствовать, но не участвовать непосредственно в этих беспорядках. Uh, but connected to that, attending, you don't actually have to physically be in the middle of the civil unrest itself. Но под присутствием это не означает, что вы физически должны находиться. And I don't know, because I'm not a journalist, but that's why I want to know who thinks they need to be in the crowd to cover the story. Как журналисты, кто считает, что нужно находиться все-таки в толпе, чтобы дать освещение этого материала и происходящему? Ну, если если толпа становится больше, тогда лучше оператор он просто спрыгивает со сцены и прекращает видеосъемку, и он безопасен. When I asked him why he did that, he says he told me he went early and picked his spot and knew that he had an escape route behind him and prepared the entire thing. И когда я спросил у него почему, как он умудрился это сделать, он говорит, что он пришел заранее, он осмотрелся на местности и он знал где что нужно делать, где выход и в каком направлении, ну какие его будут действия. Four people were killed uh, in the stampede, one journalist. Четыре человека были убиты, и из них один журналист. So, when looking at that video, just because the journalist was not actually in the center didn't mean he didn't get the story, because you can follow up afterwards with person-to-person -person interviews, learning what actually happened. Uh, и как мы видим на видео, то есть даже не находясь в гуще событий, человек, журналист мог полностью отснять материал и получить всю необходимую информацию, и при этом 
а ему не нужно было слышно эту строку или брать какие-то интервью. And when we say as soon as it turns violent, try to escape and exit, we don't necessarily mean leave the entire area to not get the story, but find an alternate safe place, a safe haven to cover it from. Has anyone here covered civil unrest before? Right, so you've either been to uh, something like this or you've covered it yourself. So before you went, whether a journalist or a, a, an activist, did you ask yourself the question, if this gets crazy, where am I going to go? You are shaking your head no. Thank you for your honesty. Five minutes. It's all it takes to ask yourself that one question. If this gets crazy, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Those five minutes will save your life for someone else's. На самом деле, вот пять минут, которые могут спасти вашу жизнь или чью-то жизнь, это просто до, до того, как приступить к такой работе, подумать и, и подго ну, потратить эти пять минут на подготовку, что делать в таких ситуациях. We always recommend, no matter how calm you think the unrest might be, the process to go as early as possible and stay his thought out. Have an easy exit point. Мы очень рекомендуем в таких случаях нужно приезжать как можно заранее на место событий и осмотревшись очень четко понимать, где есть выходы и какие есть маршруты в случае, если нужно будет куда-то спрятаться или укрыться. When I was in Cairo uh, during the Arab Spring. Когда я был в Каире. Some of us were trapped in buildings for upwards of three, four days. We had to make three bottles of water last. We had we needed medication. We needed med. Flashlights with spare batteries. Yeah. If you don't have to open this bag, that's a good thing. But if you do, you want to make sure it has what you need to survive for an extended period of time. Um, you all have cameras, so you all have SD cards, correct? taking pictures and videos. We always recommend carrying one extra with you that is blank that you don't use. And this is so that if you are confronted and that memory card is attempted to be taken from you, you can give one that doesn't have all of your data on it. Для чего это? Для того, чтобы если uh, на, на вас напали и у, у вас отнимают камеру или, или хотя бы нет карты памяти, чтобы вы могли uh, отдать именно чистую карту, чтобы эту информацию и сохранить информацию своей дорогое оборудование, либо видеокамеры для Оборудование для видеосъемок, которое стоит. Что подносит с собой? Для работы, из которой вы используете в работе, чтобы освещать материал. Ну, хорошо. И я не пропустил. 
quick, uh, just a quick tip here. Understand, especially here, um, when things escalate, uh, the danger that you don't see is always one of the, the, the bigger dangers. Когда события набирают масштабов, развиваются, вы не всегда можете оценить опасность. То есть опасность заключается не только в той, которую вы видите конкретно в данный момент, но и если вы ее не видите. We have seen in the past that extremists or terrorists uh, will use uh, IEDs or, or explosive devices and put them in a portion in the crowd uh, or around the crowd uh, to, in order to, to take out as many people as they can. Часто происходит, когда экстремисты или террористы используют самодельное какое-то оружие, то есть или взрывчатые, самодельное взрывчатое устройство, и мы не можем этого предвидеть, они ну, это бросают в толпу. So try to stay away from cars or um, maybe really important individuals. Uh, if there's somebody in the middle of the crowd that is, that is the instigator, that's the person that's uh, organizing the rally. They might be who they want to take out. So interviewing them during uh, the the, the uh, violence might not be the best time. То есть старайтесь оставаться в стороне от транспортных средств, от машин, либо же от очень каких-то важных личностей, людей, которые может организовывать мероприятия, или являются важными гостями мероприятия. Вы можете их интервьюировать не во время происходящего, а после этого. То есть не делайте это как раз вот для общественных историй. Вы знакомы? Alright, so looking at this picture, where would you cover the story? Глядя на эту фотографию, где бы вы освещали материал, находясь No, where would you cover the story? Нет, где бы вы Best place to cover the story, obviously you get a vantage point of the entire thing. We also say that green patch of grass right there is actually a possibility as well. Также вот вот этот островок, где газон, тоже как как опция, как вариант для места, откуда можно выступить. What if you had to interview somebody? Where would you be? Если бы вы брали бы кого-то интервью, где бы вы находились? On the edge of the square. Or the is that where you would actually be, or are you just saying that because I'm here? Come on, would, would anyone here be in that crowd? There we go. All right, that's why we're here. So if Mark is getting up and he's like this, in that process, if someone comes from behind him and pushes him, he'll fall back down. So большие риски, что люди, которые в толпе в движении, могут его толкнуть и он упадет снова. What if there are two of you? No, yes, there was two человека. Do you pick the other person up? Who picks him up? Matt? <laughs> Who kicks him and runs? <laughs> if I'm on the ground, I don't want to get you dirty so you stand up. If I'm on the ground, all right, he doesn't want to help me. Right? He wants to create a space that I can get up on my own. 
So if the crowd is moving at us from that direction, coming this way, he's going to stand in front of me in the crowd. Properly. He's going to put his hands up in front of him. Not angry. You don't want to be angry. <laughs> he's letting people know that he's there. <laughs> I'm going to get up. Once I get up, I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder to let him know I'm up. We're going to turn around together and we're going to move to safety. The important part about moving to safety, think arms. That's why you don't get separated. And you can support each other. So that brings us getting moving to safety. How do you actually move through the crowd? Does anybody know? something from its center. Mind you, you're trying to move through a crowd. You're not trying to hurt anyone. You're just trying to move. And you also want to move in a way that does not seem aggressive. If I need to move between them, all right, I need to move one of them in one direction. So I'm going to move them at their center of gravity. So this gentleman, right about here on his head. Now, if he pushes you, if he wants to get by me, he pushes me and keeps on walking. Well, that's going to start a fight. So if you want to go through, and you just push it, then it will be a fight. But if you want to do it... This can come from a lot of different directions in civil unrest. Uh, uh, the crowd around you might get violent unexpectedly, which becomes a threat. Uh, there might be a couple individuals that are dangerous that you will want to try and avoid if they're acting in an aggressive manner. Uh, 
As Mark mentioned, there might be threats you might not know. There might be terrorist organizations who have planted IEDs unknowingly. There also might be opposition groups, and a lot of times they will show up to provoke the civil unrest further. Another threat, which uh, might be a little contentious, would be police and military. When police and military get involved in unrest, um, a lot of the times it's to try and put it at bay, to put it to rest. But at times it can escalate further and become dangerous. Um, something we tell everybody is that you always respect the higher authority, no matter the situation. How many of you actually respect the police? <laughs> Yeah. A lot of happy faces in here. How many of you will leave if they tell you to leave? How many of you will stay? You can just uh, uh, stay in the distance. So you, you will not go. So there's definitely a happy meeting. Well, here's what I will tell you. If the police tell you to do something, and you don't do it, what will happen to you? You can be arrested because you're going to fall the And if you're arrested, what does that stop you? Uh, you, uh, if you're arrested, what does that stop you from getting if you're arrested? Uh, you, uh, yeah, if, if you're arrested, then you can't do it. So, you can't do it. What happened to the journalists that didn't do what the police said on the first time around when, when, when this started? Uh, they saw the videos? What happened to the journalists when the, um, when the fight broke out? They were beaten. They weren't even arrested. It doesn't make it right. But don't contest the police. Your words are your weapons. Your video, your articles, all right? Call me if you want somebody to fight. I can't write. I can barely count. But I can fight. You guys, you get this. I tell journalists all around the world, listen to the police. Do what they say. Don't contest them. Who disagrees with me? <laughs> More hands now. Yeah, you guys are getting some support. Ну, у нас 
sino que si no encuentra si tiene que ir para contar si va a ser un poquito más cercano. Cuando te das cuenta de que vos tenés estado humano, o sea, ¿y estado? Bueno, Max, ¿y quién es? What I want to make sure is that you know when to stop arguing with police, and you 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 hit it right on the right on the head. Someone had mentioned distance earlier, and just to reiterate, you always want to just keep moving back when you're in that situation. If the police are attempting to confront you, keeping that distance will avoid them from confronting you, uh, while you will also get your story. How many people ask police before they record or take a picture of them? No, every second I had done. You don't have to. You absolutely don't have to. But might it be a good idea? If you get their permission and they say yes, you might be the journalist they like. I'm just saying, it's a tactic, sometimes it works. When I do close protection, I go to the police and I say, hey, this is my journalist, I'm protecting them. Uh, can they take pictures and record you? Ninety-nine percent of the time, they say yes. If they say no, I tell them I'm going to anyway. So I'm just letting you know. You're opening up communication. The important part is that that line of communication, don't be the enemy of the police, be a journalist. Do we respect the police? Probably not. Are they the enemy most of the time? Yeah. Do they have the power to arrest, kidnap, and beat you? Yeah. So, don't be an activist, be a journalist. Live, get the story, fight another day. This is where we come back to that very first point we mentioned. Attend, but don't participate. And make that distinction very clear when you're interacting with police. 
И мы, собственно, вернулись к первому важному правилу, что вам нужно присутствовать, но не участвовать в общественном беспорядке. Какие-то вопросы еще? Comments? People still disagree? Yes, ma'am. This is a very good question. Overcoming panic when you encounter uh, a situation that you're not prepared for. Uh, the first thing I'd uh, like to say is preparation. When I go to Somalia, I go there knowing it could be a very peaceful trip. Or I could get shot at, a bomb could go off, or I could get kidnapped or arrested by the government. So mentally I'm already preparing for the danger. Just mentally I'm, I'm putting them in my head. But that's a small part of the battle. Uh, the next part is mental exercises. I'll imagine what I would do if something happened. That's that five minutes, right? Take it and play it over. Oh, someone just punched me in the face. What would I do? Это пять минут, просто в вашем воображении вы себе это представляете и обыгрываете ситуацию, которая может происходить, и что вы будете делать. Допустим, если кто-то меня ударит в лицо, что я буду делать? We saw in the video for the active shooter when they heard gunshots, people just kind of looked around, right? Ну, то есть мы видели на видео, что когда отвечали выстрелы, люди просто осматривались по сторонам. If I was in the video, you wouldn't have seen me because I would have been on the ground. So mental exercises are number two. Think about it before you go cover something, before something happens. Think about what you might do. Now forget being a journalist for a second. Think about being a woman. You go out and have drinks with your friends sometimes at bars. Yeah. So have you ever thought about maybe what happens if a guy tries to attack you while you're walking home? I do this all the time. I think if she tries to attack me while I'm walking home. These are things you have to practice. These are things you have to keep in your head. Now, all these things will help you get out of a panic. But a lot of um, a lot of times, what I tell people when I'm when I'm rescuing them or, or jumping out of a helicopter or taking them out of a plane, uh, I tell them to focus on something that uh, is completely different than what we're doing.
my very first combat situation, uh, when I was getting shot at, I started singing. It worked. I moved, I did what I was trained to do, I knew exactly what I was supposed to do, but my brain didn't start panicking and make me freeze up. So I'd say, pick a song. Keep that song in your head, you know that's your go-to, I won't panic song. What's your song? Oh, come on, what is it? What's the first one that pops in your head? <laughs> if that's the first one? And what song do you use? I've been asked that question before. Uh, believe it or not, I started singing Happy Birthday. I knew all the lyrics. <laughs> and it was a short enough song that I could just keep repeating it. But if that was the first song that popped into your head, let that be your song. Uh, the truth is, there's no one proven method to get yourself out of a panic if you don't have someone to help you do it. But the two proven methods to avoid panic are preparation and training. Does that answer your question? I ever see you singing all over the country. Um, all right, so we're going to switch gears for a quick second just to kind of wake everybody up. Everybody I know is fat and happy right now, so uh, I need a volunteer. I'll pick somebody. I have to pick a volunteer. All right, come on back up. All right, Brooke said something about earlier about distance, safe distance. I'm a bad guy. Bad guy. Sometimes. She's a good guy. Good guy, not a beggar. Uh, what is the safe distance for her to be from me? One arm's distance? This far? One leg distance? Anybody else? Two legs distance? <laughs> This is the safe distance for her to be from me once she realizes that I'm a bad guy. Uh, it takes the average human being less than one second to cross from this distance to that distance to stab her if I had enough. One so once she realizes that I'm a threat, this is the distance she wants to get from me. Sir, can you ask your questions to the police from this distance? No? You can't, you can't say, why, why do you want me to leave? Why can't I be here? You can't say that from this distance? Well, 
usually you can see if you know they're being violent already you might be able to ask your questions from here once you realize the threat so how does she realize that I'm a threat <laughs> how does she know? How do you figure out somebody's a threat? Because of, of the behavior or if uh, the person is helping something. <laughs> well, yeah, it helps if I have a gun pointing at <laughs> Behavior, though, is good, right? Maybe if you say something that uh, I... Oh yeah, if I say I'm going to kill you, chances are I'm a bad guy. <laughs> Body language, behavior. You know, if I'm standing here like this, <laughs> I'm not that big of a... I might be a threat, but it's a different kind of threat. But if I'm standing here looking at her like this, aggressive behavior, where are their hands? Are they above their body? Am I a threat like this? No? Yes? Why yes? Because I can have a weapon in my pocket. You pull out a weapon and turn on fire. So, now you recognize the threat. So, you get your distance. What do you do now? Run. Run. All right, I got a wall behind me. <laughs> Climb the wall. You could dive out the window. Uh, call for help. Call for help. Or uh, move towards you and uh, behave aggressively. Ah, you can fight. <laughs> You don't want to move towards your attacker. I would never actually move towards you. I would wait for you to move towards me. I don't want to become the aggressor. Where do you keep your hands? Who keeps them down? In front, there is Who keeps them up? Who doesn't know? I'll take my Who uh, who takes off a shoe and holds it in the air? Alright, hands above your waist, bless you. Hands above your waist, fingers spread. Why? But if you if you have to, you can still fight, right? Ready to protect yourself, right? Same thing with a crowd. If the crowd is moving towards you, how do you stop people from running you over? What time have we done? A couple of minutes ago? <laughs> Alright, uh, real quick, I'm going to show you one small technique. All right, someone goes to attack you, right? I'm moving towards her. She doesn't want to punch me. Right? She can break her hand. She doesn't want to kick me. 
Because I can catch her foot and then we all fall. We like to use what's called a push. She's going to punch me. Right. She's aiming for my shoulders, right here. She's going to push, follow through, and then she's going to create that reactionary gap again. Uh, All right. If she wants to hit me on my shoulders, but, uh, but if you are holding the knife, well, if you can't run and you have to fight, if you if you can run, run. This is only if you have to. I need your help. Just stand behind me and if I fall, catch me. Right. All right. So she's going to push me. All right. I'm a big guy. If you hit the right spot, it will work. It's not about size, it's about technique. And what do we act with when we do this? I've said it before. What are we acting with? No, no. Physical aggression, remember? I said crazy, and some of you knew exactly what I meant. Scream. Be loud. No. Move me. Be loud. Be sure to cheat. What you going to do? Two hands. You're going to hit here. You're going to push me. You're not going to hurt me. You're not going to hurt me. Okay. One more time. A little harder. See? It doesn't matter how big you are or how small you are, it's about the technique. Anybody, no matter how big, they'll move. Somebody else is a big guy. You're a solid guy, sir. Is there somebody hiding back there? Right? It's about my height. <laughs> no, I won't push you that hard. From his side here, right? He's coming at me, and he wants—he's gonna feel it, right? I did not push him that hard. Thank you. Technique, all right? That's just a little little technique you can use to gain, gain that reactionary gap, and then you run. All right, listen, guys, we were about an hour short in time today, uh, so I do appreciate your patience and how we're kind of jumping around. We have some material that's going to be uploaded to the website for preparation. Uh, checklists, things to do before you go cover a story. Brooks, both, uh, Brooks and my cards are right up here on the table. Grab them. Give me a call. You guys need anything. And if I can't understand you, I'll use Google Translate or something. Google 
some of your colleagues in the East still call me. Uh, they still email me. They ask for advice. Uh, it happens all the time. So anything you guys need, feel free to reach out. It's really important to me, to Brooke, that when we come back, we see you guys again. So if I don't see you again, something bad happened to you. And then I gotta go find that guy and I gotta hurt somebody. Anything you guys need. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Again, thank you to our wonderful director.